Um, and I mean that, and I hope you'll stay the whole evening. Um, because I can't possibly guess why you might be here. Um, but uh, first of all, we've got apologies from Councillor Spruce and Twig, who are both unwell. Um, are there any declarations of interest? Can I for Councillor Leathers? Um, apologies, please, Chairman. Okay, we'll note that. Thank you very much. Um, we'll now move then to the open forum, as there are no declarations. Can I just explain to members of the public who are here who may not be used to what goes on? Um, the open forum is in, open to the public to speak. Councillors do not normally speak. We listen. If the item is on the agenda, we will normally discuss what we've heard. If it's not on the agenda, and I cannot contrive to actually have it discussed, then it's held over. But if we can discuss it, we will. Um, as you can see, we normally allocate um, 15 minutes, and we don't normally get so many people uh, at the meeting. So at my discretion, I can allow it to uh, carry on. I'm not going to say as long as I, um, you know, I'm not going to last the whole evening, but I, I will certainly go at minimum, if there's people who've got a lot to say, until 8 o'clock, and I will extend it, if necessary, by another quarter of an hour. <coughs> I would ask members of the public who speak not to come back again and repeat what they've said. We will be listening. We were hoping to have with us tonight because we have been promised someone would be coming from iGas, but I'm not. Is there anybody from iGas here this evening? There isn't. Okay. Um, well, put your hand up. <laughs> well, if we haven't got anybody here, but it's still, we will listen to your what you have to say. There is an opportunity for us to discuss it very early on the agenda because, as you can see, <coughs> held over from a previous report. Um, we were hoping that you know they have, we've been promised to visit. I'm not going to say we're going to say a lot about this, but we're here to listen and to what the views of the community are. If it's in fact um, fracking and surveying that you're here to talk uh, to talk to us about, so I'll now throw it open and whoever wants to. So it would be very helpful to the clerk if you could say who you are and where you live. We don't want your address, just the community in which you uh, reside. I'll go first then. Thank I'm Ian Miles from Broom Crescent. Um, I'd like to ask, and if it would be easy, you could ask on our behalf perhaps, exactly where and when the sizing, seismic charges will be going off. Um, I held a meeting of like-minded people and we heard that although I gasol, uh, Tesla had promised to say exactly when the charges would be going off. Even after repeated requests, iGas and Tesla refused to give this information. Clearly this is important if you happen to own horses or other livestock on land where that testing is happening. And the people whose land is affected need to know exactly what time and which dates it is happening. Turn the light off, it's right in my eyes, please. I don't know what you're doing, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, is there anybody else? Who... Thank you, Fiona. Any other issues anybody wishes to raise? Yes, behind you. Um, I am Stephen Orman from uh, Mickle Trafford. Um, the concerns, I guess, most people have about what the seismic survey is, it's not just the seismic survey itself, it's what it's the possibility of what it's actually leading to. Um, people will probably be aware that the um, Cheshire Western Chester had a cross-party working group looking into um, fracking and we heard some evidence from an Australian speaker called Marion Lloyd-Smith who's actually experienced fracking and is a a qualified um, toxicologist, a, a, a scientist, and looks into the toxicology of of everything to do with fracking. And she was she gave some very um, stark warnings about um, possible effects to health, 
um, to water contamination, um, the amount of vehicles that were going to be needed, the infrastructure of the of the actual um, buildings and gas and pipelines that are going to be required. Um, and that's bad enough in Australia, but um, in the UK within the narrow roads um, and the small road infrastructure we've got around here, um, it's going to be even worse. Um, so I guess what we're wanting the parish councillors to do is to take a broader outlook about what this is all leading to, um, so that they can view it in, in, in that sort of respect rather than just the seismic survey itself. Mm. I've got a question as well, and I've been in Tarbridge for 10 years. And does the Paris Council consider a local referendum of the people who live in Tarvin and abide by their view as a council? <coughs> so, you know, if the majority of residents were against it, that the uh, Paris Council would back that? Sorry, well, I think the only point I'd like to make is that we're completely in the dark as to what's happening. Yeah, yeah. We've had no information and suddenly people turn up in um, yellow jackets in the field behind us and start where knocking posts in. Can you tell everybody where you're from? Well, uh, we live in Oscroft. Thanks. And we've, so there's been no leafleting from my gas or anybody else to say what, what they're doing. Yeah. It's completely out of the blue. Really. So um, we, we feel that I guess really ought to be requested heavily to make some or arrange a public meeting to explain exactly what is happening and what the futures what they how they see the future. inspectors of the wells when fracking wells um, go online and who, who are they employed by and if they're employed <coughs> by iGas how can they possibly be independent? I'm afraid I'm not a, an expert on fracking or geology, but I do know people who are. So I've been for a talk, and the traditional method of fracking is they pressurise these areas, and induce cracks about 8 or 10 feet from the actual borehole. The high pressure cracking, fracking that is proposed by iGas is going to take place over a much, much larger distance and at higher pressure and using more chemicals. The issues are, from, not from me but from the geologist, is what idea have they got in which direction and for how long these cracks travel? Because it's his opinion that they have none. Council to ask our gas uh, what safeguards we've got for our property from the seismic tests because it's been proven to cause damage to properties in Hull. Uh, the fishery lost all its water and I'm concerned that the viability of the company to be able to oversee this operation is in question because the share price in January 2014 was £1.66, today it's 21p.
somebody tells me. Uh, is there somebody from IGAS Good here? Good evening, yes. Yeah. Sitting... <laughs> Good evening. <coughs> Would you like to come in? Yeah, of course. How many of you are there? There's two of us. Right, and there's, two, there's, a, there's a chair back there. We'll... How in it, how clever I can be now. Um, we, we started the meeting, and the public, all the public views so far have been about um, IGAS activity or your um, contractors. Um, I'll try and summarise some of the views that have been expressed, but it would be very helpful in what you say to us this evening if you could start to address those particular. Um, you know, questions that have been posed. The first one was about um, the pub lack of publicity, I think, about what's going on and where it's going on. In particular, when you actually do the seismic surveys and, you know, the, the charges that you're set up, because it was a concern in express about the impact on life um, The other one is about yeah. I think there are a number of people I are taking photographs or recording what's being said. I think if that's the case, everybody needs to be aware. Thank you. The next um, one was really about if, when you move on from seismic surveys, because there is a potential, the, the impact on small on our local community of the amount of transport that's on our narrow lanes and also the buildings that might be associated with a site, including the pipelines to get to them. Um, one of our residents has already noticed that at the back of his property, the, um, there is activity from Tesla, um, and they were at work over the weekend. Um, but he felt that uh, certainly he didn't know that it was going to take place, but he saw them, and they were wearing their uniforms on day one, but I happen to know they weren't wearing them on day two, because he told me that yesterday. Um, there's, you certainly would like, I think, you've seen how many people are here tonight, and this was only advertised because we only knew you were going to come today, um, to this particular <coughs> meeting. There is perhaps a need in the community for a proper public meeting in a, in a room which is significantly larger than this one um, because we've got the community centre main hall next door and um, it could be there and we can seat 170 there and I imagine we might would it be a popular event. Um, we've had a question about how you're regulated um, and are the people who go and inspect what you do independent from you or are they employed and would that make them very independent um, we've also um, been told tonight by someone who's consulted somebody who <coughs> understands the uh, geology that um, if you were to do work in Cheshire you would actually be working at higher pressure than in some other localities um, and therefore, what would be the impact of that work on, um, on houses? And what, uh, what would be the impact on houses, you know, if, if you're working at very high pressure? And um, the last point we got to um, was, um, well, it was a technical question. When you do, if you are fracking at high pressure, how do you know which way the cracks are going to go? Um, and finally, what, uh, I'm repeating myself here, I think it was the IGAS, what are the safeguards for property from size of tests? Uh, those are all the views so far, but I think if you don't mind, we'll hear any other views that other people, and then 
we'd be happy to hear what you've got to say. And thanks very much for coming. <laughs> I live just outside Ashton, and in our experience, Hello, David. Hello. Um, in our experience, the landowner surrounding us was put under some level of pressure to sign the contract in the first place. He very publicly stated, and a number of people in this meeting were there, that he didn't realise what he was signing up for, and he wanted to extricate himself, given the, the public feeling about the seismic surveys going on, as he didn't recognise they were being precursor to fracking. In fact, he felt that he would be able to prevent anyone fracking under his land in the future, if that ever came. And in fact, he was brought this contract whilst he was sitting on a comp on his tractor. <coughs> and the next day, when he tried to extricate himself from this contract, all of the ranks closed down. He suddenly had a meeting set up with Tesla, with iGas, with FHP, and all of a sudden, the seismic testing was still going ahead. And I think it's the powers within the landowners, if they understood that if they were to resist these seismic surveys, Tesla would have less information, and I guess we have less information what's under the ground, and therefore it would be less, it would be like a black hole in all of their information, and it would be less likely to happen. <coughs> Are there any other points? <coughs> Anybody? Yes. I'd just like to ask will all the um, seismic surveys be available for the public to see the results mm. of them, <coughs> um, especially things like um, any fractures which are um, natural? Natural fractures, which are already there, and will 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 a survey show all of those um, natural fractures, which are already there? Will the seismic survey pick up every one of them? Because I'm led to believe the geology of Cheshire is totally different from anything in America, and there are a lot more fault lines. So, will will a, a seismic survey pick up all those fault lines? I'd like to ask what Tesla and I guess proposed to do so that they are transparent, they are giving information to the landowners so that they can make informed decisions about what's going on. I think at the moment they're being very close about what's being said, so people aren't getting the information they need to make the right thing. Dr. Piers Mikkel Trafford. Are you prepared to admit, I guess, that, uh, that uh, Barton Moss was contaminated, uh, there was contamination found there, are you prepared to admit that that contamination is, is due to the hydraulic factoring test that was carried out last year? Um, I also have a question, although my own um, research leads me to believe that a fracking pod, which is, I believe, the common test for these things, Around the well, there are a number of structures, um, including ponds of contaminated water following the fracking. Um, how large would the fracking pods in Cheshire be? And following the discussed in the United States, and particularly New York State, about compulsory integration, which for those who don't know, basically involves every single pod being right next to each other in order that you can get the maximum amount of fracking underneath the area that you that the pod covers so this would mean pod after pod after pod after pod covering vast a a areas of land um, about somewhere I understand it to be somewhere in the region of a third of a square mile or two and a half acres and I'd like I I, I, I guess um, I understand that you may not wish to answer questions about fracking because all you're doing at the moment is seismic testing but I think you know and we know it is a precursor to fracking and I'd like you to answer questions about fracking and answer to how, exactly how many and how large the fracking pods are intended to be. I would like, I guess, to <coughs> my statement that there has only been one high pressure in the UK is wrong.
um, these seismic <coughs> explosions or booms were conducted in Barrow yesterday. Please. received a letter about um, testing in her paddock, um, wasn't even, who lives very near the rugby club, wasn't even made aware of the liaison meeting there. criteria for actually proceeding with fracking and what, is the, what would be the risk assessment? Do you have some uh, scale which says you know you're going into Tarvin with this area a 50, 60 or 70 percent uh, risk and how do you actually assess that? Where, what, when, when you've done this argument will we have visibility on what the risk assessment has been as a result of the survey? Could you just expand on the size of the license area that's currently being explored and how you've broken it down and where it's going to go to next? <coughs> okay. Are there any other points? There was one um, point. Uh, this will be your last one. Yeah, absolutely. There was one point mentioned at first. Just how wide is the buffer zone around any seismic test? before it reaches a, a property. Okay, so well, and this is your last. Yeah, happy for it. Um, it's really a repeat about the viability of the business. Well, and I if, did ask you to... And if damage is caused to structures during the seismic survey, Bearing in mind that kit that, that has been on iGas's share ties, what compensation is going to be available? <coughs> if a community obviously doesn't want to do one in that area, um, such as in Upton, um, where there's a huge percentage against fracking going on, I guess seem to consume in fact they want to test real there. Um, at what stage will I guess say that they are listening to the community and the community are saying they don't want it and then will I guess then go away? Uh, PJ from Trafford, can't to that one there. Um, 3,000 people were surveyed in Upton, 86% said they didn't want fracking in their community. Why are Agas still pursuing fracking? Can you tell us this evening how long you plan to react to all these questions that we're not going to wait six months for answers? Or can you give us some indication today of how long you think it will take for you to respond to this? Sorry to the Igas okay. people who obviously, they're not the Paris County. Best side. Thank you. It's very good. Um, <laughs> my mother said I was very photogenic. <laughs> my mother's never wrong. Um, is there anybody else who wishes to say anything? I wonder if, if it's true that I've heard that um, the law has changed and so that the, the, our land below a certain level is no longer, we could have no further control over, it belongs to the, to the Crown. And so once a, a farmer or whoever who has signed the contract, um, even if there's no, no benefit to himself, I guess can till, still drill under his land. How many people are aware of that? The farmer who signed Yeah, 
my instructions which sometimes get people who just feel that they are. They're not actually people who do the put it, you know, and show back in their way. I am very naive of the tracking, but all the reports I've read um, and everything that's on the internet is about dangers to children, premature births, what chemicals are released with fracking, what damage do they cause, and what is the radius from a fracking site that they would spread to, because I believe it is quite a large area and there's quite some significant health issues. Uh, I believe it's something like seven kilometres, but you may... You may what chemicals, what radius, um, and how damaging those chemicals are. Okay, I'm... Uh, a lot of people have spoken more than once. Um, I'd be interested to know if how IGAS plans to remove the, uh, the, the uranium-235 nuclear waste from the wastewater that is pumped out of the wells. How is that disposed of? Okay, we've been going now for about half an hour on questions. Are there any other people who've got something new to say on an issue that's not been raised? Okay, right. I'm going now to ask our... Oh, sorry, I have got actual another question. I'd like to know uh, what um, monetary benefit the Paris Council might um, come out of a percentage of any work done uh, under the clean scene. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, it's transparency, isn't it? Yeah, I've already. I will answer that one straight away because I've read the same as you have. Yeah. I'm told that a parish council who has fracking will get a hundred thousand pounds. I don't know whether that's right or not, but I'm here to listen as much as you are. I'm now going to stop the question. I'm going to ask the people from IGAS to answer as many of the questions that they've raised, you've raised, as possible. And if they can't answer them, we will, as a parish council, write to them, and we will get the answers back, hopefully within a good time. We will publish those on our, on our own parish council website, and also put them in, on Tyrone Online. So that, but I will ask them now to respond. It, it would be very helpful if you could say who you are and what your role is within the company, because <coughs> That's a question that's been asked. Yes, gentlemen, there's First of all, thank you for having us along. Uh, we were asked to come and talk to the Parish Council about the seismic survey. Uh, that's what we hope to do today. Clearly, there is a probably the, the majority of questions is about fracking. I understand that. Uh, I'll attempt to, to answer the questions that I can answer, but to answer that gentleman's over there, I'm afraid you have got the PR guy from IGAS. Uh, but certainly I brought with, with me my colleague here, Dave Hounsell, who is a seismic expert from Tesla. The, the reason being, we came here to talk about the seismic survey. Uh, but you're quite right, we will take all of these questions away. Anything I can answer today, we will take away and get an answer back to the Parish Council as soon as we can. Sorry, what was your name? Gordon Grant. Is it worthwhile just giving an overview of the seismic survey, which will answer a number of those questions? Yes. To start off. Okay. Test um, Exploration are a seismic surveying company. Our, our, our task is to map the geology uh, underneath any target area that falls within the prospect. Um, the prospect here actually has two prospects, one that belongs to IGAS, which is level 190, and one uh, which they're in partnership with, uh, uh, which is pedal 189, uh, is GDF Suez, who have uh, the license holder, but it's through uh, IGAS's management and, and control. Um, this prospect size is approximately 110 square kilometres. Um, and the reason for the size of the survey is, is that this survey, compared to other ones that have been carried out in the area, is a three-dimensional survey. A lot of surveying, which I believe has gone back uh, into the early 1980s, uh, was predominantly two-dimensional and followed a lot of the road networks. Um, that, that was the early days of seismic in, 
in this area, although some seismic work has been done in the late 1960s. Uh, the methodology that we're using as a three-dimensional survey is, is we have um, two uh, perpendicular lines. Uh, the, 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 the source or, or the energy lines um, run north-south and the, the receivers, the receptor lines, run east-west. And compared to a two-dimensional survey, uh, which would effectively give you the various layers of a layer cake. Yes, they would show you the various rock structures that may be there and some of the shifts and the faulting uh, that may be present. Um, it doesn't quantify them in the same way as a three-dimensional survey. So my analogy is a layer cake compared to finding out where the walnuts were in the walnut cake. So the three-dimensional survey gives you that ability to see depth as well as um, the width and various three dimensions of, of the geology. Um, a little bit like ultrasound, uh, looking for um, in, in the maternity world, you don't just put the centre on top, that's it, that's enough information. The information, um, as is <coughs> probably aware with any sort of operation nowadays, we always tend to go and have a CT scan, and that is effectively what we're doing to the ground, is we're trying to see where those possible geological faults are, where the rock stratas change, where potentially the, the, the rocks that would generate, uh, produce the gas, oil or hydrocarbon uh, may be situated and, and the, the, the real purpose is actually seeing where what any oil and gas may have migrated to through any geological fault lines. Uh, the anticipated target area is approximately two kilometres down, so it's quite some way down. Um, the seismic survey will show you the geology, but it won't actually show you that there's any gas or oil that's present. Uh, the only way that you can do that is to do an exploration well. Uh, and the exploration well is where you go to most of your questions, which I can't answer for you on the seismic survey side. Um, I recall some of the, the questions being asked were, how close do we go to properties? Well, depending on the source type, uh, the predominant source type here is a seismic charge, so we drill a hole approximately to 8 metres, and put a 500 gram charge into the ground, and at a given moment that shot is fired, and the recorded area that that's shot into is approximately 3 kilometres. Uh, the energy goes into the ground, travels down, uh, downwards, we want the energy to go downwards, it goes through different rocks at different velocities, and much cleverer people than I uh, are able to interpret that. But that energy goes into the ground and gets reflected back up by the various rocks at various depths. The frequency of the sound goes through some rocks and gets reflected back easier on other rocks. Um, and that's why the sensors are over such a large area. They, they measure those reflections from the rock up, up to three kilometres away. Um, the survey, I think it's approximately 10 kilometres wide, and uh, for most of that area, uh, that, that recording equipment would be in situ and, and measuring any vibration, including passive vibrations, and the sensors are there measuring all the time. So if there are any other events that are going on, then they would be measured, although there's no time stamp for them, so they're not always going to be easy to, to interpret. But when we vibrate the ground, with a dynamite charge, you are no closer than 50 metres to any public dwelling. Uh, the actual parameters that are set uh, are independent of ours. They're, they're, they're not uh, Tesla's uh, uh, measured uh, safe distances. They're a British standard, which I will, don't have the number with me at the moment, but I can provide that to you as the council. But they, they, they are set by an independent nothing to do with Tesla exploration at all. Uh, they are measured, those measurements are for most forms of construction. Uh, if you were to construct buildings close to, say, the London Underground or any rail networks, road networks, uh, pylons, uh, graveyards, uh, public dwellings, listed buildings, archaeology of any sort, uh, ecology, all of those measures uh, there are uh, set safe working distances from those properties. And on top of that, um, in some areas, 
uh, we actually do what they call a walk towards methodology. So if you have something that has some form of suspected um, fragility, if you want, uh, then we can set a system in place where we would be 200 metres away monitoring at the source, <coughs> at the, the fragile building or whatever, and, and monitor the what they call peak particle velocity. That's the energy that's actually arriving at that location. Um, and then we move to 150 meters, 100 meters, and then no closer than 50. And all, all those points, we, we we're monitoring high pressure gas pipelines, oil pipelines, of which there are <coughs> a multitude in this area. Uh, we completed our work through Shell, uh, through um, now SR, uh, Innispec, GrowHow, all sorts of businesses that have petrochemicals and, and sensitive equipment, and all of that was monitored through those areas. <coughs> Um, last year we did a two-dimensional survey that went through Ellesmere Port, that was also monitored and um, you know, it's something that we do day in, day out, I've been doing it for nearly 16 years. Um, so th those levels of, of monitoring, uh, which we take um, quite seriously, are measures that we take. And I understand that in some circumstances, especially around Halesby, there were some uh, sandstone um, outcropping, as you can imagine it being mainly built on sandstone. Um, and some of those levels in some places were higher than the average of three to five millimeters per second. When those locations were identified to us and we had some phone calls on our contact telephone number, um, we went out to monitor and wherever we've monitored those vibration levels for both the pipelines and any households that falls out, all of those levels were within our safety levels of carrying out the work. And that's not to say that they didn't feel an unusually high amount of energy. Um, it, it's just an, it's one of those occasions where there are anomalies. Um, it's only the second time in 16 years that I've encountered it, the other one was down in Surrey. Um, but it's the sort of measures that we would take uh, very seriously to uh, make sure we are protecting mm -hmm. our clients, nor ourselves have any intention of breaking anything. That's what we're here is to carry out. Will you pay for property damage? Excuse me? Will you pay for property damage? If it can be proven that uh, our operations have taken place uh, and that, that we are directly responsible for it, we have an indemnity. <coughs> uh, so structural engineers would be the appropriate people that would need to, to look at that. Sorry, can I just put in there? Well, no, this is Sorry. not fair. Um, well, it is fair no, to you've be got, no, I think we've got you, everybody had their say. I think it's now we're listening to Tesla and we'll have iGas in a moment. They made a note, they, you know, well, I summarised the, the points that made before they arrived and they heard a lot more after they got here. Yeah. I think we need to give them a chance. We're not going to have a debate. This is, is not going to happen like that. We're here to listen to you. I've tried to get hold of I guess a number of occasions and they've never replied back well, to me and they, I had a problem. I think so that's not a good start, is that it? That is not a good start, I no. agree. But one of the questions that everybody's heard from <coughs> tonight, one of the things is about communications. And I suspect that that is an issue I want from Mr. Grant hear from my gas and you've heard what I say how we'll handle the responses if we don't get responses to all the questions and how they'll be dealt so please Harry. thank you I, I will refer in part to your question if I may the communications of sending out public notices um, has been undertaken and I think Gordon and I will both put our hands up and say uh, we've been let down insofar as the way that the leaflets have gone out. We have um, attempted to use different methodologies of reaching people, and I know not everybody takes on this paper. I know not everybody was able to attend the open days, and I know that not everybody got a leaflet. So uh, I respect your query you saying that you've Did I ask you back on that? Excuse me? Did I ask you? Please. No. That's not fair. I, I well, you may not think it's fair, but. We, we are not going to have the debate. It's about seismic testing. Yes, well, I, the whole they, point they, that we're here. they will be talking, they are talking about that, and I'm sure 
they will in a moment be talking about how many surveys are going to take place over our area. The, the actual prospect uh, area, as I mentioned before, is 110 square kilometres. We started in the, the north of the prospect. Uh, we had some uh, natural England uh, time uh, constraints. Uh, they wanted us to be completed in the estuary, in the marsh area, um, before uh, a certain date, and uh, we've complied with all of that regulation that they, they put in place. So, to date, I know that we've um, surveyed approximately 20,000 points, and that's including source and receiver points. So that's some 20,000 GPS measurements of where either the sensors are going to be placed or whether the source is going to take place. Um, and there are still uh, some few kilometres more to go as far as the surveying of the original points are going. Um, we progressed north to south. Um, our first uh, vibration point took place on the 1st of August and we expect the last will take place mid-November with us picking up and being complete in the area before the end of November. Uh, some people may be aware that an extension was requested from uh, Cheshire West and Chester planning office to uh, point out that we may overrun the initial intended uh, completion date and that completion date I believe it's been set at the 15th of November. Um, from our point of view, we, we've uh, been through and surveyed. Uh, we have been through only three quarters of the prospect and laid out the census, and well over half of the prospect area has been recorded. Um, and we, we intend to keep to those um, scheduled dates and be complete. Um, was there any other? points on the seismic side that I, I think there was one about whether or not you've been doing it recently in Barrow. Uh, yes. The answer is yes. And the time skills for uh, Tarvin. So uh, time. Yeah. The Thank time. you very much. Uh, tar Tarvin, as, uh, as you can imagine, if we're walking, working from north to south, Tarvin is in the southernmost yeah. section, so it would be within the last week of, of the prospect area. So the second week of November? It, it should be completed before yeah. that. Okay. Can I just ask if you, <coughs> with all these survey points, you know, so how much, how much more, approximately, are you going to be doing in this particular mm -hmm. parish area? Um, I believe a lot of the survey points have been um, pegged out and marked out within uh, the close proximity to Tarvin. We're actually moving slightly further towards the west now, so <coughs> those points are in place. Um, there are some more uh, recording equipment to be deployed, <coughs> and then everything that is then set in place for when the acquisition uh, moves through Barrow and further south. There was an earlier question which hasn't been answered that can be answered now. Is if someone has livestock, yep. can you specifically mention? Will those people be <coughs> told exactly when that's happening? We are in liaison with the landowners and notifying them when we're taking access into their land. I've been told that's not the case. Me too. When, it, when, when that question has been directly asked to Tesla, and I guess mm -hmm. they have they have refused to give that time. Can I can I just ask, is it then based on what you've just said, is it down to the landowner who's given you permission to do the seismic test to tell his or her neighbours that it's going to happen? I mean it I mean, it seems to me, you know, well, well, one of the fundamental things about this is poor communication, mm -hmm. and people want to know. They may not actually like what <coughs> we're doing, but they actually feel they need to know what's going on. Where are you doing it? When are you doing it? I mean, the consequences flow from that, but that's, you know, in the future. At the moment is, well, you see men turn up in a field, I didn't expect to see men in the field because A, it's not your field, but it's down close to your house. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a matter of how do we communicate or how do you communicate sure. with, the, with the community? And it's not, I mean, 
we're interested here in Tarvin Parish Council area, but there are people here from other areas who, you know, that's what they want to know. I mean, it's information. Um, well, through the contact number uh, that uh, we have on our leaflet and through uh, the <laughs> land agents that are in touch with the landowners, uh, through those, those contacts, we, when we're informed of horse riding areas, uh, stock usually is that stock that belongs to the, the landowner or at least the tenant. So there is a method of contact through those, those channels. Um, and we do liaise with the people um, and where requested we've given advance uh, notices when we're coming, when we've been requested for that information. So you have to be requested, you don't volunteer any of this? No. It, it's people have to actually know you're coming to us broadly yeah, across exactly. the whole area. <coughs> broadly across the whole area, we've set out the timescales for the for the full seismic survey. Uh, but if you're at re specifically requesting when are, are we going to be in the field next door to you, then clearly on a uh, you know on an area as large as that, that's pretty impossible to do. Plus the fact that Tesla have to work with a number of factors. So to know in advance that we're going to be in the field next door to you, it's quite difficult. Well, even the farms weren't notified. The technicals from them not the farms are notified. Where they're working on what well, day. Well, hang on, we're not talking about fracking. We're not fracking. We're not talking about fracking. We're not talking about I'm sorry. Look, this, this is not fair. No, there, there was more than one person talking at the same time, including myself, but I tried to chair this. I think we've got to be fair to the gentlemen here and listen to them, it's, uh, you were, Gordon was correct, is it, we're not talking about fracking at the moment, we're talking of what might be, well, is a preliminary it could be for fracking. At the moment we're talking about the seismic surveys in the area and the concern that's being expressed that there's not enough publicity about when and where something's going to happen. And I think that's a legitimate concern mm -hmm. because people yes. want to know. It seems to me there's got to be a better mechanism than relying on just the landowner who may not actually live in the area, you know, to actually inform everybody that this is going on my land. Shall I, is it worthwhile me going through what we have done in the way of communication so far? I just, I'm not, I just want to put a little bit of context around um, these eight metre shafts with 500 milligrams of, uh, or 500 grams of um, explosive in the bottom of them. Yeah. I'm sitting in my living room, 100 metres away from one of those being detonated. Yeah. What would you expect me to feel here? It, Just to put some context around it. I would say, in the majority of circumstances, you would feel a dull flood, if anything at all. In the majority of circumstances. Why were houses damaged, damaged in Hull then? That was seismic testing that damaged houses, it, 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 it damaged the fishery. Right, yeah. drain the fishery. What are you going to do to protect well, against damage to fisheries? You know an awful lot about Hull, and I know nothing. And we don't know, we don't have any of the facts before us on that. So I think it's an assertion. And let's just concentrate on our small area, which we know and love. So, I mean, carry on. Yeah. Going, going back to your question, you should feel a bit flood if anything at all. Um, we have, as I mentioned earlier, had. Um, did six phone calls regarding uh, feeling. Ex ex Sorry, can you stick up a bit? I'm, I'm really struggling today. Sorry. Just can you stick up a bit? Yeah, I'll Head up a little bit, go around more. Well, no, no, I appreciate it. We have had phone calls where we've responded to people who said that they've felt a, a much larger uh, energy uh, level at their property. And we've responded to each of those by going to their property and, and monitoring them. So in most of those circumstances, I think the survey would go on without you actually knowing that the shots have been taken. Uh, to put that into some some context, I, I would know what the, what the um, um, number of people that live around Hellsby are. Uh, <coughs> if you were to say that I had six phone calls from people that lived around Hellsby, and we are now shooting down at Barrow, I think if it was something that was extremely more invasive than that, I'm sure we have had many, many more phone calls. Can I just say that the Barrow explosion just today yep. disturbed a Ruby wedding celebration and everybody knew and heard the explosion and the, and the ground moved. Okay. 
So it's not just a little. The same thing. Yeah, yeah, I, you ask me in most circumstances, that's what it is. I know there are, there are these people stations. hadn't been given any warning that we in the area and things like that. I didn't know what the point was. Well, I think that's, yeah. that's an issue that's been highlighted for the communication. You were going to tell me now. Yeah, I can more than happily tell you through the communication that we have done so far. Uh, so we, re we split the seismic survey in two, really. We had the northern area, which uh, geographically, if you can imagine, between Ellesmere Port and Frodsham Marsh area, uh, across the marsh down to the M56, roughly, as a northern area. We, that's where we started off the work, so that's where we started off the communication, obviously, and we leafleted around about 3,500 residents in that area. Uh, now, we are fully aware that leafleting isn't 100% efficient. We know that, and that's why we did a number of other things as well, to try and make sure as many residents as possible knew what was happening. So we also put uh, notices in the Ellesmere Port Pioneer and also the Chester Chronicle. And we wrote, but at that point, uh, I think on two different occasions, to councillors to inform them that the work was started. And we ran a, a community exhibition for those residents in Ellesmere Port. That was back in August. Now, that community exhibition was fairly well uh, attended. Uh, we had a lot of good questions. We had many of the uh, ward and parish councillors came along uh, so we had an opportunity to to make sure they were aware so that they could feel questions from their part their own parishes as we moved south into the southern area we leafleted another <coughs> eight thousand residents and they received two leaflets they received a tesla advance notice and then that was followed up about a week a week and a half later with an igas leaflet so overall, I think we've, shall I say, we paid for, not distributed, because I know distribution is an issue, but we certainly paid for over 15,000 leaflets to be delivered. Uh, we put another advert in the Chester Chronicle when we got into the southern area. We wrote again another two times to, to councillors. We've been constantly updating our website throughout the process, and we've also done uh, both broadcast and print media. <coughs> And we held a southern community event in Littleton two weeks ago, I think it was now. Now, people have asked me, why did you hold the community event, event where you did? And why didn't you hold them in my parish? And they're all absolutely fair questions. Across the area, I think we touch on 33 parishes. Clearly, we couldn't get to every parish, because the survey would have been ahead of itself. Uh, we picked the location primarily with the residents in mind for ease of access and secondly to find a venue that was big enough to hold us and could hold us in the time scales that we needed to run these events. So overall over 15,000 leaflets delivered, three adverts in local papers, two community events we've written four times to, to councillors and we've been updating our website as well to try and keep people informed. But I do accept that we haven't reached everyone because I get the calls as well from people who said we didn't know you were coming. And, you know, there's no reason why people would say that if it wasn't true. It's an absolutely legitimate thing to say. Where we have had calls, we've either tried to deal with those on the phone or we've gone out to visit people you didn't to, go through, <laughs> to go through. Well, I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm, I don't know you, I, I don't think I recognise you, but I'm more than happy to, mm. to take your details and follow that mm. up. So well, I, I don't know why did. that I've would have I've emailed you on a number of but occasions I, I, and wrote phone calls. To iGas or Tesla? Tesla. I did the seismic testing, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, no one got back Are there any other groups <coughs> you heard this evening that you can respond to? There are a number, and you know, just to also say that the reason I came was because I wanted to talk about the seismic survey. It's not because I want to avoid fracking questions. We don't. We're more than happy to talk about that, and we're happy to the council to arrange another session, and I can bring some eye gas technical people to come along at a later date if that's something that you would like to do. 
uh, but I can pick up on some of the points that I noted as we went through, but I will definitely commit to getting all of your questions answered and writing to the council. When the uh, council closed the road, we tend to put a notice there saying this road will be shut from this date to that date. I've not seen a notice around saying it's going to be laying off explosions and even seismic surveys. <laughs> yeah. well, the council seemed to get by communicating with everybody about it. So the central side of the field? What would you like to do? Would you like me to pick up some, yes, some more please questions? Please so pick I can't. Up, pick up uh, yeah, you, you can answer tonight. Okay. Um, I'm getting close to the limit I set, but I will. I'll, I'll run this now to late 30 and then stop it. Okay? okay. Uh, you may finish in this and that, yeah, and then I'll stop it back. I'll do as much as, much as I can. Uh, there were some questions around uh, what happens in other countries, uh, and particularly talking about pits, I think someone mentioned, player pits, something like that. What I would say is, and I think that's a good, a good demonstration of the regulation being different in this country what you see in other countries, certainly those kind of things would never be allowed in our country under our regulation. We're regulated through a number of different routes. Obviously anything that we do, whenever, when the seismic survey is complete, clearly we'll need to identify where our next well is going to be. When that happens, we will absolutely be informing the local community in the first instance. We've got a situation over at the other side of the country in uh, the East Midlands where we are progressing a planning application for an exploration well. And we have been in that community, small community, for the last 14 or 15 months. Boots on the ground, talking with the communities, <coughs> groups set up to make sure the community liaison groups, talking with the parish councils. That's what will happen here once we know where our next well is going to be. Why is that no, not working that in Upton? Be. Why is it that the vast majority of people yeah. in Upton don't want it? It's half a mile from a school, mm. and yet it's still being forced on the, on, on the so community. To go back, uh, I'll answer your point as well. Go back to the regulation point. We can't do anything without getting planning application permitted. That's the first form of regulation, independent regulation, is that we have to have planning permission. To get planning permission, we also have to go through a number of stages, which means that the Environment Agency are satisfied with what we intend to do. <coughs> they will regulate any drilling activities going forward, as will the Health and Safety Executive and as will DEC. So there are a number of different layers of regulation that, will, uh, that, that, that we have to continually update and progress as we go through any drilling activity. Now, I don't know if you're aware or not, we've fairly recently, over the last couple of years, drilled three exploration wells in the northern part of the area that we're talking in. So we've drilled at Ellesmere Port, at Barton Moss, and at uh, Inns Marshes. Uh, how do we get to know where our next well's gonna be? Well, we'll take the data that, we, that we've that we recovered from those wells, we'll put it together with the data that we already know from previous seismic surveys and with other forms, British Geological Survey, uh, and we will add it to this 3D seismic survey data that we'll get back, and that will give us the absolute best geologist teams to identify where the, 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 the most optimum place to put a well. Why are you using faulty drills? Putting a well isn't just about what's happening on the ground. Well, clearly that's an important part because that's where the hydrocarbons are, but we have to you know, place just as much importance on what's happening on the surface as well, because we won't get planning permission if we're going to put it in the middle of a housing estate. You know? So, so the, 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 the surface and the subsurface is just as important to us as we, as we put together a planning application. You haven't answered the question. If the community say they don't want it, yeah. well, no, you're telling me 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 you're telling me
The first stop will be the planning application, which goes to Cheshire West and Chester. One of their councillors is sitting by my side here. The parish council will get an opportunity to comment on any planning application that's in this particular area. And our views are taken into account when Cheshire West consider it. So that's, so your view, your community view, can first of all be expressed through the parish council when we get an application, which may be sometime down, you know, in the future. Who knows? But that's the way, and that's how you get your set. I'm sorry, so that's the planning not... application was refused in Wrexham and then was overturned. <coughs> so planning well, application that's the rule. is not I mean, So will this company abide yeah. by yeah. the decisions of Quack mm -hmm. and its parish council? Is what the question is. Well, <coughs> well they hang on. Lived experiences yeah. that they work. They, they'll we, take it over your head to the planning inspectorate. So well, the, that's right. That's the rules. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the rules that we should be. Well, I'm sorry. No. That's the rule. I'm not sure that there's many more. There are some technical questions in there which are, I will come back to the council with some answers for, but I'm not sure. I have a question I think possibly could answer. It was around how many well heads would make it financially viable. So, what is it, so to make it financially viable in this area, how many well heads would you need to drill in the Cheshire West and Cheshire Council we don't, area? We don't know the answer to that. We're in the very early stage of process. Of, of the process, we're in the exploration phase. We need to first identify where the hydrocarbons sit and whether they will flow. So we won't know so the so answer. Your investors haven't had any communication. Well, the investor communication is, is public. And well, exactly. That's why I'm asking a question about accountability with the community. Could I just ask a question, please? No, no. I because I am going. Have you finished? what you were going to say, because one of the things I just want to say is, and I think this is, is the communication with the community. Um, somebody mentioned towards the end that when the council is going to close a road, they actually put a sign up. Now, well, most of the time, isn't it? Um, so, I mean, it would, is there something more that you could do? Because it seems to me it's, it can be, it could be too random in <coughs> the communication. And, you know, if something could go on the website that you're going to do it, we could certainly pick it up in this community through our target online. And that would get, I mean, that would certainly be picked up by a significant number in the community. I, I agree with you. And I think we did a survey almost exactly the same area last year. We didn't come quite as far down as carbon, I don't think. But, but certainly for the northern part of the survey, and I don't know how many people remember that, but most people I speak to, it bypassed them. I think this year has been different. It's much more in the public's conscience, and I think we need to learn from that. I think we have learned from We are learning from it, and I think there is more we can do, absolutely. <coughs> so there's nothing, I mean, we will, you've made a note of the, all the questions. We'll actually put them down as well and then we would very much appreciate somebody responding to them and then we will make that available on our own website and target online website as well as they'll be published in hard copy as well for those who don't have access to the computer. Okay. Chairman, I don't want to ask a question but I would like to say if I may, um, there will be a lot of questions that people will have milling around about future processes in relation to fracking potentially. Um, Further information is available from all sorts of sources. As Ward Councillor for Tarvin, I would just like to point out that Cheshire Western Chester did run, and I think somebody mentioned it earlier, the Unconventional Oil and Gas uh, Cross Party Working Group. Those were all videoed and they're all available online and no, it's really good. Taken down. Mm -hmm. well, if they're not, I'll find you a link to them. Thank you. Drop me an email. Um, but uh, they are a really good source of balanced information from both sides of the argument, so it would be well worth having a look at those if you do have any questions. Council. And I'm not sure whether anybody else can recommend where else people might go if they want further information, balanced information. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, right. Voices from the gas fields. You can, watch that. You can certainly... YouTube. Uh, <coughs> last year, the industry body run a, a, a process where they went out and asked the general public for questions and those questions were sent away and were independently answered by uh, professors, doctors and health professionals and things like that and all of those questions are on a website called letstalkshield.com and they're all independently answered questions.
Well, I think, uh, while you're putting a lot of emphasis on shale now, um, when you first started work in the area, you were working at coal bed methane mm -hmm. and you were assured that shale was not an option. Um, That takes you into the shale layer. Mm. Now, if you weren't looking for shale, why would you go that deep? Yeah. Are, are you looking for shale, or are you looking, looking for, for coal bed methane? We're looking for like hydrocarbons. hydrocarbons. Okay. Regardless of where they said, yeah. So shale. The shale. So, so you what you said at the beginning. Yeah. So at the beginning of this process, mm. when we were uh, discussing the table before, okay. uh, we oh, were told that it's coal bed methane. Is this a seismic survey, or was this one back to the <laughs> right? Just about okay. Just last year. Thank you very much. I think I'm, I am now going to draw this part of the uh, discussion to an end. Thank you very much for coming. And can I thank, thank everybody else, five minutes. Um, it's been very important for the community to have your views. I'm sure you will go away and say, I shut you up and I didn't let it run all night. And I'm, I won't apologize for that, but <laughs> because I, you know, there will be another opportunity, I am sure. But I think we've got a lot of good questions tonight, all of which will be answered, and all of you will be able to get. Well, we'll ask them, and hopefully they'll be answered. Who knows? Um, but thanks very much. Thanks very much for coming. I don't need to respect it, it's a way of contacting you.